Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Africa's malaria vaccine drive moves up a gear, with Cameroon taking delivery of over 300,000 doses of RTSS. Several other countries are planning on scaling up their immunization drives as well for a disease that kills hundreds of thousands of children every year. Also, Anglophone separatists are blamed for the killings of nine people in a market in French-speaking Cameroon. The raid in Bamenyam comes amidst a secessionist conflict that's dragged on since 2017. And Mozambican inmates at a high-security prison are some of the first to be involved in testing of the use of AI in identifying cases of TB. Early diagnosis is key to saving lives and tackling the spread of a disease that's killed over a million around the world last year alone. But first, over half a dozen people have been killed by suspected English-speaking separatists in Western Cameroon. The country's English-speaking northeast and southwest have been at the heart of a secessionist conflict since 2017. Indira Etting tells us more. At least nine people have been killed in Bamenyam, a small village in the west region of Cameroon. The attack, which happened on Tuesday morning, left at least nine people dead and 10 others abducted by suspected separatist fighters. Eyewitnesses say about 30 gunmen arrived on motorcycles dressed in military attire. The eyewitnesses also recount that the gunmen were speaking in a broken English, commonly called the pidgin language, which is popularly spoken in the English-speaking regions of uh, Cameroon. While they ransacked the market, they burned five shops, two vehicles, and made away with 10 motorcycles. Though no one has claimed responsibility, Responsibility for the attack, the country's Minister of Communication, Rene Emmanuel Sadi, says the attack was carried out by separatist fighters. This is not the first time separatist fighters have left the English-speaking regions into a French area attacking and killing people. This attack comes barely two weeks after 24 people, according to official sources, were brutally assassinated by separatist fighters in uh, Egbeko in Manfe in the southwest region of uh, Cameroon. Attacks on the civilian population happen every now and then in the English-speaking regions of the country since the start of the Anglophone crisis in 2016. Indira Eteng there for us in Cameroon. Now, more than 330,000 doses of the RTSS malaria vaccine, known as Moscarix, have been delivered to Cameroon in a game-changing scaling up of the regional immunization drive. Several other countries on the continent are also planning on rolling out the WHO recommended vaccine. 1.7 million doses are set to head to Burkina Faso, Liberia, Niger and Sierra Leone over the next few weeks. The fight against malaria is of global concern, but Africa is affected more than any other region. It's where more than 95% of malaria cases and 96% of deaths happen. Most of the hundreds of thousands of fatalities are children under five. So this step will really save a lot of lives. Africa has been at the heart of the pilots that have led up to this rollout. And earlier, Dr. Mary Hamill, the malaria team lead from the WHO, told me more about why she was so excited about what was learned from those earlier pilots of the Moscaric program in Ghana, Kenya and Malawi over the last few years. Kenya is the leading. Uh, now is the first and it is very exciting to see what we've learned from those pilot implementations, which were conducted in Malawi, Ghana and Kenya, where the vaccine was rolled out by the ministries of health in those countries. And over the past four years, more than 2 million children has, have received the vaccine. Over 6 million doses have been, uh, have been administered. And what we've seen is, first of all, the vaccine has a very strong safety profile. So that's always the most important with vaccines. But something also that's quite exciting is that there was very high impact in these countries, as the vaccine was rolled out, we saw a 13% drop in child deaths from all causes. So just to make that clear, this is a vaccine against a single disease, and yet the drop we saw was against 
all all causes of death. And it really goes to show just how important malaria is in these areas of as a cause of child deaths and how it really can contribute to deaths even from other diseases, bacterial diseases, malnutrition, and other, uh, other illnesses. And the third thing we learned is uh, a number of lessons about how best to roll out this vaccine. The vaccine is, requires four doses for optimal benefit the fourth dose is given a little later than children usually receive uh, their childhood vaccines. But a lot of lessons have been learned that the countries now preparing to roll out the vaccine can tap into so that they can be very successful in their rollouts. And, and where does the vaccine sit within the wider landscape of, of all the tools, tools generally used in, in the pushback against malaria? Yeah, that's a, that's a very important question because we do have tools that are very effective and the backbone of our tools are insecticide-treated bed nets. Children are going to need to continue to sleep under bed nets. It's very, very important that one intervention isn't exchanged for another. If we want to see this added benefit of this decrease in deaths, we have to continue to use the tools that are available while the vaccine is rolled out and, and even after the vaccine is rolled out. All of the tools provide some protection, but none are 100%. So children will continue to sleep under their bed nets. They'll be getting the vaccine. Uh, there are certain areas where medicines are helpful for preventing malaria. And of course, whenever a child who lives in these areas has fever, they have to go promptly for diagnostics and treatment. So the WHO has, has um, recommended uh, Moscorix. There is also another vaccine that's on the scene, the R21. Um, is there any um, plans to, to, to fold this into the, the, the push in the fight back against malaria on the African continent in the, in, in the future going forward? Yeah, so this is a, another uh, exciting development that comes right uh, right in a, a similar time frame. The R21 vaccine was approved for use by WHO in the end of October. It's now undergoing what's called the pre-qualification review where WHO assures that the vaccine is of high quality, the manufacturing is of high quality. And once that's completed, we expect that vaccine to be available uh, for, for children uh, in Africa and beyond as well. That vaccine also is expected to have high impact like RTSS and having both vaccines available means that there will be sufficient supply of vaccine so that children living anywhere where malaria is a major public health risk will have access to the vaccine. Dr. Mary Hamill there from the WHO speaking to me about the strides being made in pushing back against the spread of malaria across Africa. In other news, lawyers of jailed South African Paralympic champion Oscar Pistorius say that they are hoping for his immediate release if he's granted parole later this week. The 37-year-old was convicted of murdering his girlfriend, model Reva Steenkamp, 10 years ago. She was shot four times through the bathroom door of Pistorius' home in Pretoria on Valentine's Day. Pistorius is due to appear before a parole board on Friday. And prisoners in Mozambique have been on the forefront of tests using artificial intelligence to screen for TB. The disease killed more than one million people globally last year and is the world's second most communicable one after COVID. Take a look. An unusual scene for this maximum security jail in the Mozambican capital Maputo. An inmate standing before a tripod with a wide white tablet. Behind him, a technician is using a portable X-ray machine connected to an AI program, a tool that has been held as a breakthrough in a fight against tuberculosis. The image is processed in real time with a diagnosis in less than five minutes. In general, patients with tuberculosis are treated during the first phase, and if they're contagious, they get quarantined at a special infirmary until the end of the first phase. Then they're submitted to a baccaloscopy test to decide if the patient may pass into the second phase or another. 
Parliament. At the Maputo Provincial Penitentiary, prisoners who are tested positive are placed in isolation, locked in this quarantine room, and more serious cases are taken to a medical ward. Kenneth Fortune has been tested positive to tuberculosis and will have to be patient. It's not easy to see your friends playing there, walking there, but you have to accept that I'm sick, I'm sick. I'm just pushing my time here. When the finish, certain time comes out, me also will be out. The World Health Organization says prisons are a hotbed of TB, a disease caused by a bacteria that most often affects the lungs. Mozambique recorded about 120,000 infections last year. There's now hope that the new technology will help eradicate the disease. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again if you can. Till then, take care.